Thank you for joining us for this meeting of the Business Club. As those of you who have seen previous programmes will know, the six of us come from different trades and industries, and we'll be looking for clues to survival in small business in these times of recession by sharing common decisions that we've made both in the past and today. We're going to hark back to the first program um, where we looked at Tony and some of his problems, in particular the problems of dealing with a single buyer, or a single large buyer or a single large supplier. And more generally, we're going to look at the impact of looking into a very changeable future caused by world recessions, changes in government policies, more competitive activity or a changing marketplace. Well, today it's Joy Dawson's turn and perhaps, Joy, we could have a look at a film that shows you how you run your business. Right, right. Named after the village in Essex where it's located, Danbury Conversions is a small firm with a nationwide reputation. Its business is converting motor vans, supplied direct from the manufacturers, into motor caravans. Danbury's contribution to the final product takes place here. The design and finish of the fittings they install and the final selling price of the vehicle make Danbury Conversions competitive in a difficult marketplace. When the Dawsons joined the company in 1967, the motor caravan idea wasn't new. George Dawson's claim to originality was his design for a cheap, multi-purpose conversion in which seats could face forwards for travel and be reversed where necessary for dining. It was a winner, and Danbury became the biggest converter for Volkswagen vehicles. Since then, the firm has updated and broadened its range, and their vehicles are certainly competitive. Yet sales figures hardly compare with those of the early 70s. So why the decline? Joy Dawson. When we originally started to convert motor caravans, we were solely converting on the Volkswagen shell. So therefore, Volkswagen were, in effect, our lifeblood. In 1971, they decided to change their marketing policy and reduce from three official converters to one. We, at the end of 1971, having converted over 3,000 units, assumed that we would be the obvious choice. Unfortunately, the demands that they made upon us were a little too strong for us. Um, it would have taken away a great deal of our independence, so we, in effect, decided not to become the official converter. Blow number two came with the introduction of VAT and car tax. This forced Danbury to increase their prices by a devastating 27.5%. The third and perhaps most important setback that we've experienced was, of course, the death of my husband. Um, he died in 1978, but he had been consider you know, very ill for quite a considerable time. And, in fact, in 1976, he made Julian Zompier and Dennis Oxley directors of the company and myself managing director because he at that point in time could no longer cope with the full responsibility. Joy Dawson is the first to acknowledge the support she's had from directors and employees alike. Another 15 cents. And is that coming in at the same price? Yes. She also feels that she's made a few wrong decisions. In 1978 we were delighted to get back the official convertership from Volkswagen. But, unfortunately, I made the mistake of entering into that market with exactly the same model that I had left the market in 1972. I hadn't allowed for the change in the market and the change of specification which was required. So I bought stocks in of the identical conversion that we were making in 1972. Then in 1979, Volkswagen introduced a new model, which was an entirely different shape, and required complete redesigning. Having realised the mistake of entering the market with the old forward-facing seat conversion, I then went completely um, in the opposite direction, totally upmarket with refrigerator, um, electrically operated elevating roof and so on, which the other two official converters were also doing without the, the electric elevating roof, but basically the layout in their vehicles was the same as ours. So there were three people competing in exactly the same slot in the market. And I had made the mistake of having made the decision, assuming I was going to be quite right, and bought sufficient stocks for a year. So I tied up over a quarter of a million pounds in stock, which has got to be a pretty large mistake.
ten years ago, the purchase of a country mansion seemed like a good idea to the Dawsons. Until they found out it was a listed building and couldn't be turned into offices as they had planned. But recently it's proved to be one of the company's most valuable assets in the face of recession. 